Hello, uh, friends and fans, and just people who uh, sent us uh, questions. Coming to you with our answers, the A part of the Q&A. First question, what does the asterisk in your name stand for? Well, as our experiment, as we have, I think, told in previous interviews, uh, mean, it doesn't mean that the music is so experimental, uh, it, uh, it, but it means more that um, we are experimenting with the, with the music, we are experimenting with, with each other, and, and the asterisk, <laughs> asterisk in the name, me, basically it's like your free will or your free option, so you can wear the experiment, you can hear the experiment, you can, you can dance the experiment. Yes, you do can, whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, like. I think if I would have named the band I am experiment, that would be like too uh, egotistic. Who and what are your biggest influences? Please, Mick. Uh, we can take a coffee. Influences are a, are, an, are a great thing because I think people a lot of times confuse uh, influences with like if I'm influenced by one band then I like exactly have to copy them and that's not the case at all. Influence is something you like art, you watch or hear or see and then you kind of make your own interpretation or get emotions or or um, or uh, imagination from that and create something something new which is then actually a copy which is also kind of a paradox but for me I think the most influence uh, influences are like uh, bands or artists who who want who are bold enough to be themselves and for me those kind of artists are like uh, from childhood like Offspring and uh, Nirvana and The Prodigy uh, Nine Inch Nails, uh, The Mars Volta, you know, Mute I, Math. Mute, mute Math, I know Handos gonna probably say Sigur Ross, mm. but he will talk about it more. And uh, I went to see a movie or a, or a concert recently that just gave me that emotion. And I kind of remembered why I started making music in the first place when I was like 12 or something. It, it was that feeling when I went to see Prodigy, it's like those guys do not give a damn about anything else that's going on at the moment, like music-wise. Because, you know, there, there can be labels or, or stuff, people going like, this is hot right now. I mean, like, even people can, like, say, like, oh, EDM is, like, happening right now. You should make an EDM record. Like, I think if you're an artist and make uh, make something that you're being pressured into doing, then that's not honest. And these bands, that are name, always were honest to what they were doing. And, and I would like, I would love to believe, and I do believe, this band is, is a place where all of us can, can do that. Uh, I had a luckily period a few years ago and uh, she was my girl crush and uh, uh, as I scrolled down my blog that I, that I wrote for six years I understood that I was I was like acting like luckily or what I saw when she was dancing on the stage, and I, w I was doing that uh, with Iris, like the same like movements, and I felt luckily in me. And also like FK Tweaks. I remember like yeah. when FK Tweaks came out, then you were like quite obsessed in a in a good way <laughs> yeah. uh, with her and only and special yeah. ladies. Yeah. Oh, and I, got, and I forgot Florence in the Machine yeah. and yeah, Mew. Probably. Yeah, and of of course, Muse. I remember like yeah. a really big influence for me, to, like creating like a really epic live show was that I don't know how even how many years ago, like me and Kostya and maybe it was even you uh, gave a, one of our friends like this um, uh, birthday present, and the pr birthday present was basically the Absolution DVD live DVD from Muse. And, and it was like captured in, in Glastonbury Festival on the main stage and, and when I saw that, that live video I, was, I said like, like well one day I would like to do something like that. And, and also uh, Radiohead who has like through the last 20 years like 
they, I, I can swear here it's YouTube. They don't give a fuck what's going on in the mainstream. Like I would imagine, like somebody going to Tom York and man, man, you should get into EDM. Like you would probably like with his intellect, intellectuality, just fucking punch him, fucker. Do you have any plans for the upcoming summer? Hmm. Very good question because we have been talking about this and planning and and brainstorming the shit out of it for the last couple of months. Um, the situation is that we we finished recording our debut album a um, few months ago and a and few weeks ago it was really re as ready, it, it came from the, the mastering guy and and now we are just sending the album to some important people uh, in in hopes to get like a, some kind of a record deal or 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 whatever label or promotion support. And we all already might have something, but yes. we cannot go into it um, deeper. Yeah. So basically, the plans for 2016 and two, two, 2017 uh, is uh, the plan is to uh, tour beyond Baltics, Poland, Czech Republic, Germany, Aus Austria, uh, the Benelux countries and beyond. So yeah. basically that's the, the, the main, main goal and, and also... Uh, so when we come to your town, come and buy tickets with yes. like hundreds of your friends, yes. then we can come, come back. Yeah. And, and of course we will release the album, we have some video ideas, and we have some more live rehearsals coming, like yes. a lot more with the new album stuff. And we have a video for Patients coming. Yes. We have actually two videos for Patients coming. Yes. And One is like a mini, or like a nano, nano uh, live at rehearsals video. Basically. Yeah, we can call it live rehearsals. But it's, it's, yeah, so I mean, keep up to date, I guess, with our webpage. Yeah. And when you sign to our newsletter, the secret, secret, secrets then you will yeah. get like a um, pre-scoop on what's going to happen. Yes, so basically we had this idea to to um, to make the secret uh, mailing list. So if you join like iWorkExperiment.com slash secrets, then whatever happens in the in the iWork experiment world, the people who are in that on that list in that list. And it happens to you too. Yes, it happens to those people before so Other it people. happens in the whole wide world. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Who are currently your favorite Estonian and foreign art artists? Okay, I will. I will start. Uh, um, I like Jack Garrett, Benjamin Clementine, um, Saint Vincent. And um, and from Estonia, I think uh, Lexo Dance Machine, Elephants, yes. Elephants yes. from Neptune, yes, yeah. and um, Ingrid Lucas, Ingrid Lucas, yes. yes. Oh, wait, Dave, yes, wait, Dave is cool. And also the oh, and also the bands that are here on the wall, like yeah, Everett and and Iris and. Um, Yes. Try to attack. Yeah. I can't say because I don't feel at the moment there is one band in Estonia really kind of popping. Like really popping, popping. Yeah. So I mean like really getting there like 100 game, 100 game. Everybody's doing like, such a good Yeah, I mean like, in, I think in like, a, they, like all the bands have like a year, year and a half and then they will like really kick, yeah. kick ass. The last, yeah. the last two good songs that I heard from Estonian bands was basically from Milliardit, the yeah. new band of Martin Guningas. That sounded really good and and yeah, it was good. Yeah, and I, I by the way, I haven't told you guys yet, but I there's a band from Poland called Bash, and they have a yeah. really cool remix for uh, Siamese Sister is the song, but it's remixed by I don't know, it's a complicated name. I will send it to you. <laughs> yeah, and, and because it's it's really great. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, listened to two days in a row. Just uh, it's been looping. And, and one cool band we saw in 
Waves Vienna or it was in, no, it was in Bratislava who was, was uh, Bla, Bla, Pablo Novel uh, and he has done remixes for like uh, uh, Radiohead and the XX and and, and yeah. But recently like I guess the Mute Math album is like the like I've been listening to that yeah. the most and I, and I, I uh, somebody ah uh, one guy from the Estonian Radio Two asked me a few days ago, like uh, which is my favorite uh, David Bowie album, and uh, then I thought like should I lie or should I tell him <laughs> the truth? Like basically the last Black Star album is the only one I really like. Everything else I'm not feeling, but but the Black Star album is amazingly epic. And this uh, drummer Mark Gigliani or Gugliani, Gugliana, Gugliana uh, plays drums there, and and he has played in Estonia a f- few time, times with uh, one double bass player Avishai Cohen, and and I'm a big Avishai Cohen fan. So like I, I was like when I made that connection, I was like, yes, this album is even more epic. <laughs> so let's see. What are you like? Nobody. <laughs> it's the it's the question when you ask, what's your favorite band? I don't know any. Yes. <laughs> no names. Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> Only the childhood Mine memories come blank. back. Mine is blank. Mine is blank. He's like the dictionary of great new music that nobody knows of. I just, I just, uh, I like to do Spotify lists, so mm. I have snippets from artists, but I don't mm. listen to albums not that much. Yeah. And busy is like a blogger. And a Ingur uh, fanatic, <laughs> so she kind of probably finds great stuff from yeah. blogs and stuff. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Ah, Son looks. I just oh, watched yeah, an yeah. interview with him yesterday. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. To go. Ah, thank you for that one. Have you uh, have you went Kelgutama this year? If no, do you plan to? Sle- sledging. 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 I haven't. No. And I will and not. No. I slip a few times. <laughs> Maybe it counts. No. It if doesn't. like a five year or six year old would ask me, I would go. But otherwise, no. Okay. Uh, what genre, genre do you consider yourself in, if any? We consider ourselves in the genre of uh, good music. If you could uh, go back in time and go to any festival, concert, what would it be? I would like to go back in time to see play Rage Against the Machine play live. Because I'm afraid that they will not play anything. And I, I and I've been like from very early <coughs> age I've been a very big fan of Rage Against the Machine. And I've seen those like lives in YouTube and I'm like always like mm, why wasn't I there? I have to say that David Bowie's, I don't know, early yeah. years concert. That Can't see be, that. I think, yeah. I thought about it, and I, this question kind of is going for say Woodstock. I yeah, won't say yeah. Woodstock, but I thought about it. I thought like Led Zeppelin. I would like to see Led Zeppelin. Uh, Those super long concerts. Yeah, and and like Led Zeppelin or that kind of era or Michael Jackson, mm. like uh, but this eighties when bad came out or something like yeah. that there's like that time when you know, everything was live there was no backing tracks and all the musicians were musicians were extra good so michael jackson or led zeppelin bravo I'd like to see john bonham <laughs> <laughs> oh it continued uh-huh. can you recommend us uh, some good bands that have influenced yourselves saint vincent mute math a pro dredge yes. can be the bands many people don't know yet. Um, and if you have the opportunity to go see Nine Inch Nails live and yeah, and Prodigy, so, well, co- those guys are yeah. still kind of doing it. Yeah, and Justice Live is also super epic. And and see what us maybe. Yeah, that was a good concert. It sounds. <laughs> oh, I like this one. Do you believe in the existence of Atlantis? Yes, yes, I do. And I believe in a lot of other th- things as well. <laughs> well, my theory is I believe Atlantis is, uh, whether it's submerged somewhere in the ocean or it exists uh, 
be on the uh, allowed line in the Antarctic, uh, Antarctica, mm -hmm. that's our threat, where like uh, civilians cannot go. At least in here it's not so cold. Do you believe in the existence of Atlantis? I don't care. But this subject does not interest me, sorry. Hmm. Why is Johanna so damn cute? I have a good answer for that. It's very simple. It's because uh, her mother is like a strong and smart Estonian woman. And Who takes uh, no bullshit. No bullshit. And, uh, and, and her father is a bass player. Like me. <laughs> so... It's like a That's very why. super good combination if if there are like super smart and beautiful and strong women out there uh, you should all marry bass players and have children with them. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Nothing yeah. to add there. <laughs> what will you do if you win Eesti Laul? If we win Eesti Laul I think uh, we will the go to Stockholm. Yeah, well, yeah, we will go to Stock Stockholm. We will fly there. Yes. And and we'll do what we do the best. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll play there and and try to first first of all we we try we try our best to present us and um, and second of all we try to represent Estonia like we do. All the time, if we are playing in in a small bar in uh, Shaoliai or on the in the old town of Riga. Please discuss about music video importance. Is it possible to succeed without them? If yes, could you please bring examples? I will start with this one. I'm the most skeptical about the about the importance of music videos. Don't get me wrong, I love music videos, especially when they used to have great budgets for music videos. For example, I still watch today a lot of the Busta Rhymes music videos. <laughs> I love Busta Rhymes. I love that era where there was just so much money and they made great videos. Of course, they make great videos now also, and I, I think it's overhyped because you get that one video, I myself might watch the video one time and be like, this is a super cool video and tell all my friends, and that's probably the last time I will watch that video in my life. And uh, I will probably check that band out if I like the music on Spotify or SoundCloud or buy their album. But I will not especially go and see their video on YouTube because I just don't care because I like the music. Because and you are not a visual person. I'm not, a vi I'm not the, in the sense a visual, visual person. If MTV was what it used to be 20 years ago, it would still be on and I would check out probably more videos. But maybe I don't have the time. But I don't feel the need to watch goddamn music videos. I, I can't give an example, but I think, of course, you can succeed without a music video today. Absolutely. Like, there are... Okay, I like the last Mute Math album. Uh, there are no videos for the there last There are two. Mute. Well, I haven't seen any of them because <laughs> I just don't care. And I love the album as much because music is music. If I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, I don't need a video format to kind of, um, you know, um, persuade me to like, please like this because this looks so cool, although maybe the music is a bit shit. That's my answer. What do you say, Busy? Um, I just, I just like visual and I like videos and the yeah. pictures and that's my thing. Me too, I, I enjoy good music videos that like bring some emotions, like I don't know, some like Foo Fighters, Best of You video. Yeah. I've seen it many times and... and um, but that was still, still in the era where there were like great music videos made. Yeah, but it, 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 this video did, did not... Also do you need so, so big budget, it was quite simple, but it had... It, it had a budget. Yeah, okay. Let's go on. Can you explain very interesting name of your band? I think Hando answered it already in yeah. the beginning, mistaking the question for the what is the asterisk stand for? <laughs> <laughs> I just 
so geniusly yeah. combined those two he questions. He wants to answer it all the time, so yeah. let's him do it this time as well. Again, I did, rewind to the beginning. Okay, basically, I will try to make it short. I guess it means uh, we experiment with pride in what we do, and we wear that kind of emotion and principle with great honor. I wear experiment. <laughs> How did you guys meet? And is it difficult to work uh, such special, different music in such small country? Uh, how would, how we met? Me and well, Mick went to the same school together. As we, Estonia is. Yes, yeah, yeah, super small. small. <laughs> and uh, we did not, did not like each other. Uh, then but we, then yeah, then we talked. Yes. We found out that we like each other very much. <laughs> Yes. And then, shall we do it the long one or a short one? Let's do the long one. Maybe in the future nobody will ask the question because they watch the video okay. and. <laughs> okay. You, you know, you, you, you started. Please continue. So anyway, we, I, then it goes back. I thought Handa was the biggest douchebag in school. Yeah. Well, not the biggest, but one of the biggest. Yeah. And he thought the same about me. And we had never spoken in years. And then uh, I started dating Handa's. Uh, Classmate. Classmate, a girl, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, we kind of ended up having lunch together, and uh, then I told I play the drums and I was like he plays the bass and I said hey man I got like a rehearsal spot near here you want to check out my drums he was like <laughs> oh yeah, then went there and I don't think we jammed I don't remember, and then we kind of became friends in this few hours. Yeah, and then he just looked at his drums and yeah, and then we <laughs> kind of kept in touch. And then Hando got to know all my friends and his new friends, like everybody else in this in this gang we have here. And then Hando started dating this uh, cello player, and uh, through the who was in a band called Mural, and through that, uh, I guess both of us met Johanna, who yeah. was the singer for that band. It was a very badass band. Yeah. I hope we will post demos. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this really cool man because there was this uh, like battles of the bands in Estonia or like, and and uh, we were playing this rock music. There were guys from Mushi playing this metalcore music, and then Murad was also performing like this. You were, like, Small 14, girls 15. wearing skirts yeah. playing, yeah, playing like this really classes. Uh, and, yeah, but it was so good. And, yeah. Nerd band. And we became uh, kind of friends and. Yeah. I don't know, then Johanna invited me to her birthday. Yeah. Do you remember how old you got? No. <laughs> anyway, I felt so out of place because I was the old dude. Because I'm like older than both of you. Yeah. And like, I probably was like your 14th or 15th. 15th. How, how big is the age difference between us? How old are you? I'm 29. <laughs> it's like four years. Four years. Okay, you became then 15, yeah. It was Johanna's 15th or 16th birthday. So I was like 20. And by then, then I was smoking and kind of drinking beer a lot. Then I went 20 years too. I was like being a super, super kind of uh, very, uh, very kind of... Well behaved. Well, yeah, I behaved really well there. Yeah. And I played bongos for one of her songs or yeah. something, djembe. Yeah. I don't know, we became friends kind of there. And then yeah. we all ended up in the band Iris. Which is like, which was many years after that. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, kind of known each other then for, oh my god, I've known you for almost years. 14 years. R yeah. That much. You were all also Yeah, we were 16th year birthday, I, I, I become 30 in summer. So we have known each other for, f basically half of my life I have known Johanna. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. How was the process of writing Patience? Mm. I can start with this. <laughs> You're very really talkative I, today. I remember, so yeah. Yes. I mean, I, uh, you can continue it. So yeah. I, I, I just remember Hando coming with the, uh, it usually goes like this, Hando comes with the idea and whether me and PC destroy it or really love it. Yeah. It can go either way, it's never like it's okay, it's like complete shit or it's amazingly good. 
And then uh, I, I, I guess from the patients, the only thing I remember is Hando coming with this really fucked up Tom part that didn't make sense yeah. at all. And then it kind of was in the demo folder. And then it's some, and I remember coming to the studio and you had this, they had sung the line, uh, my feet are on fire. On burning and reeds, they lie tired. tired. Oh, that, and, uh, and, that, that we wrote later, but my feet are on fire, that kind of struck me. And it's weird because I'm, I used, I'm, you know the, what's the movie? <laughs> the movie with Which the King Arrow Girl, the Hunger Games, Hunger Games. Uh, and and, I, and I, I, okay, this is going to take a long time, no. So I, I love the Hunger Games books, but I hate the movies. And I, Hunger Games, the last Hunger Games had just come out. And I totally hate it. But you know, if you go to see one part, you have to see them all. And then that my feet are on fire kind of really reminded me. So I was kind of like, oh, if they're going to make another Hunger Games, this should be on a soundtrack. <laughs> Although we only had like my feet are on fire. And then it was the first time I remember I was like, this is something really cool. And I yeah. al also said kind of lying yes to the fucked up Tom part. Yeah. And then I don't know, then some, then, then I don't remember what happened. But first of all, the, the my feet are on fire like hook was in the pre-chorus. And, and we tried to like make even like more amazing chorus like vocal part uh, but we failed so we thought like ah oh, fuck that we will just use the my feet are on fire in the chorus and uh, think something else up to the pre-chorus and to the verse thing and 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 in the beginning it was also like the first chorus there were like acoustic drums there yeah we, we redid the tom part mm, yeah. a lot of the times and then I have to take credit here because mm. I tried to convince Mudo, our producer, and Hando a lot of times that the first chorus has to be without drums. Yeah. And they were kind of saying, yeah, 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 we'll try that. Like we'll When the song that. is finished. The song is finished. <laughs> this usually means, yeah, we're never going to try it. And I was, I was okay, I'm going to wait for that moment. I'm going to believe in my heart that that moment will come. So, and then they got stuck with that idea. Yeah. It just didn't work. And then I was with Hando, I think it was like two months they had worked on it. And I was like, in Saturday morning, please just fucking mute the drums there and I was like no and I was like hey man like you have been doing it for two months just give it a chance and then I remember we tried it and it was like Hunter was also like <gasps> and he was like getting out his synths and trying the high synth there yeah to make it work and, and then like the song came alive and the mood came he also liked it and then kind of it kind of stayed like that yeah. till the like the late production and actually the tom part was really finalized like a few few weeks before we went to record it yeah and and I, what, I, what I also remember about the, the chorus part is that in the beginning it was quite like um, like guitar bass drum like a very like a classic classical rock bandish uh, it had this really classical rock rock band vibe to it and then we had the, the idea to like m83 the shit out of it yeah, yeah. and then we just tried like hundreds of different synths and, and in the end I think it was the we used Prophet and, and some uh, Moog sounds and, and of course some like um, Arp Odyssey yeah. stuff and then tried to make the, the chorus really like big and wide and, and, and so on. And that song really made us crazy actually. Yeah, it was the I think like one of the own, like one of the few things that like survived the whole process was the 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 drum loop in the beginning yeah yeah uh, which is just like a like a core volka yeah. uh, drum pattern i did and and, and which was really like messed up and like made our mixer bit really angry was that as as in core and in those drum machines you can get only like one line out which is like bass drum everything goes through the whole to, through the same channel and in the mix you can't really like uh, tweak it but yeah that was the what do you remember about it sorry i didn't hear you <laughs> <laughs> well uh, let's continue then. Next. next question next question <laughs> let's see it's what we're boring yeah we're just so boring <laughs> i don't believe uh, uh, and also, what uh, what's the song about, and uh, what inspired you when you wrote it? The song is about patience. Very simple. Um, 
Actually, it, it, no. goes, it goes through two themes. The, the first theme of the song is, uh, it's, it's about patience that we like learned while creating the whole album. And that's why the name of the album is Patience. And that's why the, like, the big hit single is called Patience. And to, during this period, this one and a half years, we, we recorded the album and, and produced the songs. That like it re like I'm a very impatient person, and I think you also are not the most patient persons in the universe. And and making this album really put the patience to the test. Yeah. And that's that's the first theme that goes th through that song. And the second theme uh, is that we are surrounded by so many great people, like who give us such great advice, like how to make the songs better, how to do the live concerts better, how to manage everything in this crazy music business world. And, and it's like a thank you note for those people. Uh, and as, as the song starts, like, tell me please the cooling breeze of patience you mastered overseas, which is basically, or it's about all those friends and, and people who have- More experience. Yeah. Have more experience and have traveled the world and then Come back here and 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 gave and, and given us some small bits and bites of, of those hints. So we. Mm. Do you guys uh, used to watch Eurovision on the past years? If yes, which songs do you like the most? I'll be very honest. I haven't, I haven't watched Eurovision since Estonia won, and God knows when was that. Two thousand one, something. Something something. But the songs we have liked during those years, I like the uh, Saga Po, the <laughs> Greek song, uh, also the Alexander the Buck song, I believe in a fairy tale or something like that. I really like the the Sweden winner, the with the thanks. Thanks. Ah, the Lorraine. Guy with the Lorraine. Thanks. Yeah. Lorraine. Yeah, yeah. That was really cool. Oh yeah, song. that was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I watched last year. Ah, <laughs> you're lying on the camera. I had nowhere else to go. Uh, like, <laughs> Poor you. I mean, like, I didn't want to be alone, and I uh, went to see it with friends. I left before, like, uh, the vo in the voting was like in the middle of the voting. I went home and read the next day who won. Next. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Which Estonian Eurovision song is your favorite? From Sylvie Wright to last year's Goodbye to Yesterday. What I remember, or like the first thing that comes to my mind is Kula by Oit Lepland. Yeah. It's a, it's a great song. I remember when I was young, I also... I remember like when I was quite disappointed that uh, the Sylvie Wright uh, me, um, song won. But fast forward many years when Sylvie I... Wright was the last place? I don't remember. Was no, the no. the last place? No, no, but she won in, a, in ah, a, the okay. Estonian pre-final. Yeah. Anyway, or well, the Estonian final. But but actually, it's a really good song. I, I think. I like Eight is coming back. I like Ines is seven once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I like uh, Gula. It's a great song. Uh, Goodbye to yesterday. I like that song yeah. as well. That's great. That's really great. Can't think of anything else. At the moment, yeah. that we like. I see we right. It was great. That's yeah, great. it was great. Yeah. 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 Mm. Why do you want to go to Eurovision? Euro, Eurovision. There's a. I think there's. <laughs> we. I think we haven't said that anywhere that we really want to go to Eurovision. We. We. If we have the opportunity to go there, we will be happy for the opportunity, but we are most happy for yeah. for the opportunity to perform at Eesti which yeah. which has become one, one of the most important like new Estonian pop music events uh, in the in the past years. Yeah, and uh, like right now we're just doing Eesti and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Not thinking any further. 
What do you really, uh, really think about the Estee Lauer and the Eurovision Song Contest? Do you see it merely as a great opportunity to ad- advertise yourself or do you actually listen and like other songs as well? I'll take this first. Do it. I think Estee Lauer is a great opportunity for uh, for all the songwriters in Estonia and I think the game has been like the envelope has been pushed especially yeah. during the last three years and it has become such a great uh, kind of medium before it was like just a monopoly in one guy who kind of basically decided who goes and what happens and um, and I in Estonia is absolutely a great uh, place to advertise ourselves and as we are still like not still but we are an alternative band so like we are not mm-hmm. a popular uh, or popular band in pop band sense you know I mean yeah we don't so, go to the fancy receptions and the fancy yeah, parties we, we are here in our studio yeah. and uh, messing studio. Yeah. but anyway and and but it, is, it is a great opportunity and uh, the Eurovision um, I mean, in Eesti Laul, I like a lot of other songs. I'm kind of li- even like looking forward to now each year. Yeah. And I u- didn't used to not give a fuck about Eesti Laul, but now I do. Like, if we were not to play there, I would still like, check out the songs and, and kind of get into right. it. But going to Eurovision... Change on the question. It's a long question. Um, I like other songs as well, but... Uh, Eurovision, I think it's it's great if you're into that kind of thing, and uh, I think it is a lot uh, political in a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, as are most of the things in the universe. Voting where people give their voice <laughs> and in the universe, but I mean, I actually have no opinion. If we would could go there, I would love it. Stockholm, Hell Sound Drum Store. Paiste Super Sound Center, Stockholm, the song contest, all the party vibe. Why not? Let's do it. You know, if not, I'll probably watch it on TV. And and life would be great. Yeah. Nothing more to add, I guess. <clears throat> do you have a favorite in Esti Laul, 2016? Cartoon. Yuri Bootsman, Go Away Bird, I like the song, I really do. Windy Beach. Mikveda, yeah. Mikveda. And, um, yep. Yep. It's good, I like Laura's song as well. Yeah. And uh, what do you hope for in your career? After Estilaul slash Eurovision. We have an album coming out and I hope people will, if you like our music, buy the album. For my tunes or your CD, I'm not saying this because uh, I'm trying to sell the album, believe we're making no money. <laughs> uh, but just uh, we have put a lot of work into it and, and we appreciate if you listen to it with good quality with good quality equipment or at least like medium quality headphones, earphones, whatever. Yeah. And that would be like great present for us already. But yeah. about the plans, the album is coming out. We are doing some touring. Come to the concerts. Yeah. Uh, check what we're doing. Um, and after this album, we start doing the next album. As soon, I, as, soon as we have time, we will start yeah. doing the new album. Yes, and right now we are putting together our live concert which is like maybe people in the audience audience won't like realize but technically it's like like a 180 degrees turn and yeah. basically it, it it means that that we or like at least I am learning to play it, it feels like I'm learning to play some instrument from from the z- from zero and and trying to develop the live concert to be even more like um, massive and, and 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 epic experience for the audience. So we actually like question was what we hope for. We hope hope for new fans or new people who would like what we do, and that's great. Yeah. <coughs> what do you hope, PC? In our career. Yes. The question was like uh, yeah. after is still out. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. 
No, to do some good shows and more of them and yeah. to be on stage. We will be on stage. Yeah. Lots more. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think, how well are you going to do in Esti Laul? Okay. I'm quite sure that we won't be the last. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> yeah, but most probably we will not be the first one first as well. So uh, hopefully, I mean, if you get to the Estonian finals. But we're talking about the Est- ah yeah, Estonian finals. Yeah. yeah if we are, if we're gonna, it, it would be success to us if we get to the Estonian finals. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yes. You greedy. I'm not greedy. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking on your behalf. <laughs> or not. What inspired you guys to enter Esti Laul? We had a song. <laughs> we had a song that was uh, quite ready, and it was suitable for Esti uh, Laul format. And and we had also another song, uh, which personally I personally I like more. Uh, but as it as we see today, then I'm the only one. Yeah. Who likes it? Yeah. <laughs> likes it more, and and um, and yeah, basically that was the the essence of the uh, motivation to burn the CD, print out some papers, give signatures, and give the song. Yeah. And and we are very happy and and glad that it was chosen from this two hundred and a little bit more songs to the top ten twenty. Hopefully, in the end, we'll be in the top five at least. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Thank ah. you. Thank you for all the yes. questions. Uh, we actually did not expect so many questions at all. And and the funny thing is yeah. that usually when like a, a journalist does the interview, the questions tend to be quite boring. But amazingly, the questions yeah. you ask from us were like. Ninety nine point eight percent really nice yeah. and really interesting. So we so, are we are very happy yeah. that you did that. So I hope our answers were like good long enough, enough, long and okay. good enough for you. Or we're holding back on the answers. Yes, and hopefully we can do it again in some time when the album is out. Yes, we can talk in about the few, album in a few times.